Hi, I'm Kelly with Cobblecraft, K-A-0-K-A-O. If you've been following a while, you know that we're about putting things together that are broken. We're about uh, kind of doing that on the cheap. And I'm here today to announce a, a new video series. Uh, this is a little out of the ordinary. It's not about radios or fixing trucks or anything of the sort. Uh, it's more about looking around our society our nation and saying, hey, something's broken here. And I think I know some things that'll fix it, but it's not something I can just pull out of my head. It's something we all have to work together on. So this little series is going to be called Navi. I'll explain why in a minute. But first I want to get back to Cobblecraft. What that's really about is if I'm going to cobble something, you know, it carries the the kind of idea that I'm sticking it together with glue and toothpicks, but maybe. The real idea itself, though, is that you know what something is at its core. It's, it's beyond all the technical aspects of it where we have to replace parts and build circuits and stuff. It's just taking it down to the rudimentary issues and putting them together in a way that'll make it work and maybe get you on to the next phase. And that's really what my concern here is. I'm not a religious man, uh, my friends can tell you that, but I do believe in God and I believe we've made some mistakes in this nation in walking away from him. I understand why people don't believe in God, I really do, because there's a lot of BS that's been done in the name of religion, but that's not about God. Uh, there's a, a saying, especially I believe among Hasidic Jews where there's this idea that God created the universe with a purpose. But it wasn't just like we picture it. He wanted to be, you know, some sort of person that's worshipped with slaughtering bulls and goats and stuff. That's not the idea. In fact, the Old Testament says, no, that's not what he wants. What it's really about, the idea, he says that he desired a place in the lower worlds. Now, you could look at that from a religious perspective and say, oh, then he wants a temple and he wants all that. But that's not really it. He's wanting a place in the lower worlds. This is saying that he has a, an upper world. God doesn't need anything. He certainly doesn't need our worship. But he, he wanted to create a world where he can come down into the lower parts of it into this this uh, physicality and this physicality and all our messed up nature and dwell among us when you're so perfect and apart from all of this world that's kind of hard to imagine but if we got a religious nature that sees it all as him sitting on some throne with a long beard then, then we don't even see that we can't even appreciate what that means in reality, that's, that's just one of the outer trappings of what he brought because people became so religious when he made Adam and Eve. You didn't see that. You see him trying to walk with them in the garden in the cool of the evening. But then there's that whole sin thing, which we walked into. And so we'll kind of be delving into this as we go into this Navi thing. Navi is actually a section of Torah. There's three sections. There's Torah, Nabiyam, which is Navi, and there's uh, Ketuvin, which is more of the writings. Navi is really, that's the word for a prophet, and that's what this section of the book is about. It's Joshua, Judges, uh, this particular part we're going to be looking at is 1 Samuel. And I'm looking there because when God created this world that he wanted to be in the, this lower realm, he did so in a way that he would be a king. Why in the world, unless you've got some sort of superiority complex, would you want to be the king? But that's the clincher of this whole series. We'll see what a king means to him. Because if somebody's going to worship God, they need to do so in a way that honors him. He determines what worship means. He determines what this world is. And we'll be talking more about that too. And as in fact, why it's ridiculous not to believe that there's a God, but, you know, I understand why we wouldn't. But we'll find out 
that kingship is a totally different thing to God and that he has a totally different um, understanding of it. We don't have in his understanding people who stand up as tyrants and demand things of people. Yes, he wants worship, and yes, he gave some rules, but you'll see as we roll through this that he gave those because of the hardness of hearts. So what we'll see as we roll forward in this little book is that there's a story. We tend to think of the Bible as some sort of um, list of do's and don'ts, especially if you're not familiar with the Bible. But if you are familiar with it, you'll see that even though there's 66 individual books by how many different authors, I think almost 40 different authors, then they still have a cohesive nature to them. They all come together and they tell a story. And that's what I'm really about here. Even when I'm doing Cobblecraft, I'm not telling you how to build something, I'm telling you a story. Because from a story, you can draw that into your world and build whatever you want. So. Uh, as we build on this story, I hope that you'll get to know God and maybe you'll decide, hey, I, I should look into this a little more. I'm not going to get into it in any depth right now. Um, we'll be reading. For, we won't actually be reading. I should correct that. I'm not going to try and read anything. I'm just going to tell the story like it happened to my neighbor or to my family or my friend because that's really how the Bible is written. It's written as a story. There's a few people that were separated from the rest of the world. And he says, look, I'm going to bless this guy. Not because he's outstanding, but because that's the one I'm choosing to do. And we'll see as we move forward here in Navi that uh, this story unfolds to really tell us some things. Um, it's interesting. The first three words in 1 Samuel, uh, it's all about a story right there because if they translate that into English it would be like saying um, so there was this guy this one guy that's literally what this says there was this one guy and how, how much better a way is there to start a story than that there was this one guy and you know anytime you're sitting around with beers and whatnot that's almost literally going to be said so here we go sorry I got to dismiss a uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not about video editing so uh, this guy, his name is Elkanah, Elkanah in Hebrew, and as I go through this story, I'll read them, their names basically to you, not read again, we're just telling the story, but this guy's name is Elkanah, and you'll read through it, and you'll probably think, well, in English, I'm told this is Elkanah, well, okay, you read it how you want, but his mom would have called him Elkanah, let's read that way, let's, let's be familiar with them for their story. Because that's part of our problem when we read the Bible. We read it into our world. But here we are, most of us, in the Western world. And here they are in the far, in the Middle East, you know, far away from what we have today. And their customs and their language, everything is different about it. And we have to look at it through that perspective. As I try and tell you that story, that's what I will do my best to accomplish. And I think you'll enjoy the story as we go forward. Um, Peterson, what's his first name? He's a brilliant guy. He talks about how this is all a story when you read this. And I don't know that he's a believer either, you know, as far as a religious person. But I think he looks at the Bible and really understands that this story needs to be told and it needs to be a part of our lives. And as I look around at what's happening in the world and I see people just hating on each other all the time and just getting more and more divided and angry, I think this is our solution to get back to the core principles of what makes society work. and.